Hello and welcome to Ula Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is the horoscope for Leo. If Leo is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so this is a bonus reading for Leo. And today our card is the King of Swords. It's everything to do with that kind of mental space, that, that focus, that clarity, that innovation, that creativity. The communication too, that's important. All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see what these tea leaves have to say. And so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a comment, please do, especially if you're new to the channel. Shout it out. Let me know you're here for the first time. And uh, if you'd like to hit the little like button, I would not be mad. I appreciate it so much, actually. Okay, so we have the number six right up here. Uh, seems important, right? <laughs> um, we have the number six, and I'm looking at this. It almost looks like we have C and G. C, G, okay? Could be initials or part of a word, a name. So, it does look like I keep getting this feeling of kind of waiting for some kind of news, like a message, um, a phone call, something that feels important, right? You're getting some information back or, you know, the first thing I thought of is like maybe going to the doctor and you're waiting for you know, test results, or uh, maybe there's somebody in your family who has uh, been ill, they have not been feeling well, well, and they, um, you know, are going through maybe the process of um, figuring out what's going on with them. And you're kind of waiting to hear, you know, um, I don't necessarily feel like this is directly you, although it could be. Okay, I feel like there's more of kind of a support role here. Um, and we have a person standing here. You can see the face and the, the body here. The hand is up. We have a bird. Now, the bird is the messenger, right? The, but when the bird shows up, we know we have some kind of mail. You know, like back in the day, you've got mail. <laughs> it, it's here for you. Um, so I do think that this will be coming in pretty soon here. Um, not much more waiting on that. But there is just this feeling of um, anticipation, right? And so I kind of even wonder if this is not necessarily like a bad thing, right? It's not, um, you know, waiting on something that, and no, it doesn't have to be about health. Let me just say, this could be like, you're waiting to see, are you, you put in like an offer on a house or, um, you're waiting to see if, uh, your kid got the, the job they were trying to, trying to um, get or, you know, whatever it is. It feels important, but it also feels like this is maybe going to end up being a really positive outcome, okay? So, um, I do see, we also have three people. One right here, you can see kind of the head up here, the body. These are the legs, okay? And this one looks like, yeah, it's running, right? Whoever this is, running. Now we have another person up here who also looks like maybe they are at least walking. <laughs> they maybe don't have exactly the, the running um, 
stance. So you can see the two legs here. Here would be the head, the body. Um, now down here we have the head, we have the arm, the body, we have the legs, like they are running, running, running. And so I do feel like this is kind of a, um, a group movement. Um, maybe like family, uh, you're all moving somewhere, you're all going somewhere, you're all dealing with the same thing. Uh, this is kind of, it gives me a feeling of like everybody being involved. This isn't just like you going through the thing by yourself. And um, and I, and I don't know if this is related to this first part where we're talking about you waiting for a message. Um, but I do feel like there's a certain amount of transition happening in at least the family dynamic. Now this might be the whole, your whole life is kind of changing. Like I said, it could be like you're moving, you're, um, you know, your, uh, maybe getting a new job or a new, you know, which maybe comes along with like a new schedule, new pay, you know? Um, but I do, I feel like this is something that everybody has been working for in the family. It's not just a singular person or just you yourself doing all of this. Uh, this is very much kind of a close family unit and, um, feels like a, um, a thing, a project, a, um, you know, um, some goal that everybody has been putting in time to help reach. Okay. So, you know, this makes me think of like, um, you know, maybe, you know, you're, you go back to school and so you have to maybe work less hours and, um, you know, maybe your spouse is working, uh, longer hours so that they can bring in a little bit more money. So, um, you know, that can help you go to school and, you know, whatever, get the certification or the licensing or, or degree or whatever it is. Um, and then ultimately, you know, you all, um, benefit once everything is said and done. Um, you know, but I do, I think that this is like a situation uh, where, yeah, you have kind of a close bond and, and, um, a family that feels like you're really good at teamwork. You're really good at checking in with each other. And so, um, it does, it feels nice. You know, usually when I see running, I'm like, oh gosh, what's going on? What are you running from? Um, but no, I think that this is more along the lines of, you know, people really having your back and you having their back as well. Definitely, um, definitely in a place that, uh, feels productive as well. Now, we have the E up here. Oops. The E up here. Okay. Um, and so I'm looking at that and I'm also, it looks like EP, maybe EP right there. But I feel like maybe this is related to somebody who is transitioned because it looks like it has a wing on it. So I feel like this is maybe somebody who has passed on. Um, maybe once the head of the family, maybe like grandma, grandpa, great grandpa, um, great grandma, whoever it is, maybe grand, great auntie. Um, but there is a sense of this was a person that really held things together for everybody. Um, And I'm almost wondering if they, if they had moved, maybe immigrated, um, moved across the country, whatever it was, they made a big change, transition for them, for themselves, but for the whole family unit, right? Um, 
made some really tough decisions, did some really hard work to get the family to where it was. And then as the kids grew up, you know, maybe your parents or your grandparents generation, um, this person really kept the family together. Uh, family events, making sure, you know, um, as people got married and had kids, that everybody was kind of at a place of ease. There wasn't a lot of conflict. Um, I feel like this is a family where when somebody gets married and they bring in like a, you know, their spouse, right? Um, that's family. There's not, there wasn't this sense of, you know, conflict with the in-laws and the, and the new family members, you know, kind of assimilating into the family. It just felt like there was a strength and togetherness. And I think that you more than maybe anybody else in your family right now, right? Extended family, I'm talking, you hold these same principles. I think that you're really kind of the embodiment of this grandparent, great grandparent, um, you know, whoever it was, you have become that you're, I feel like you place a lot of importance on, um, everybody kind of coming together, uh, especially when there are things to celebrate, uh, weddings and babies and, and um, graduations and birthdays. And, you know, I think that you're somebody who's very, um, you have a good memory for these things, but you're also like, you always call, um, you know, you maybe send cards, uh, you know, uh, not everybody sends cards anymore. A lot of people should be sending texts and stuff, but, um, you know, I feel that they're, but you're old school. <laughs> you maybe even write letters, which shout out to you um, for the letter writers. I am also somebody that tries to. I don't always get it done, but I've gotten good at my cards. I'm pretty good at sending out cards and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, I think that you place a lot of importance on remembering each other, on including one another. Um, you know, I think that there's just a strength in your ability to kind of keep things from, you know, entropy, right? Where it's just the family just kind of starts to, um, and it's not even just falling apart, but, you know, kind of separates and, and is, is uh, taken by the wind, right? Everybody just ends up in different places. They never see each other anymore. Um, you know, maybe on like social medias or whatever. Um, but you make sure. You're like the one that, it, you know, is out here um, putting together like a family reunion type of situation. Um, good at also navigating all of the impersonalities, right? All the complexities that come along with, um, yeah, having an involved family life. And so, um, I feel like this is one of your higher callings in life. And you might think, well, that's silly, Lenore. Like, you know, doesn't everybody kind of want their family to be together? And, and, and it's just like something we do. Well, no, no, it might be portrayed as that, you know, like in, you know, if you're watching some kind of soap opera or, you know, whatever, not soap opera, but you know, like the prime or, uh, what is it called? I forget now primetime TV or whatever, you know, like these kind of situational comedies and dramas and stuff. No, not everybody is close to their family. A lot of people actually, I feel probably are not any longer, you know? And so, uh, yeah, this can be definitely a higher calling being somebody who kind of keeps the tribe together. And, um, you know, that doesn't come naturally to people always, but I think for you, it has. I think it's also that you grew up around people who really prioritized uh, watching out for one another. 
So I think that this is something that you should take some pride in. This is something that you, you know, maybe consider as one of your superpowers is that you're really good at kind of herding cats, right? If people that are all busy and have a lot of things going on and, you know, um, whatever, but you have made sure that there, there's a closeness there that there's a familiarity of family and not just kind of, you know, not really engaging one another. Um, so that's a beautiful thing. And I feel like this person coming through and also we have the Cardinal right there, um, coming through and kind of is a confirmation of you kind of taking up the mantle, right? You are the one that um, has really taken on this role as kind of the glue that keeps the family together and um you know it, for better or worse right it's a, it's a lot of work you know um if you have ever hosted anything or tried to get everybody sorted so the schedule fits it's a lot of work the more people that are involved the more complicated it is um but i do i feel like you're pretty dang good at it now, we also have the letter V that seems important. I think this is actually related to this family member that we're talking about that's coming through and kind of, yeah, recognizing. I see, I see you taking, you know, my place in the family, taking on my role, I should say, not the place, but taking on the role. Um, now, we also have uh, a rabbit here. So I feel like in this next, maybe a year or so, there's going to be more than one child coming into the family. So maybe, um, you know, some grandkids or, or maybe, um, you know, siblings having children, maybe you're having a child. Um, but I do feel like this is kind of, um, you know, like a, there's a wave of children on the way. And so um, that is something to be uh, you know, looking forward to definitely something most blessed. Okay. So we're going to go over here. We have the letter B right up here. The letter B. We have a person beneath the moon. You have the name Lex, maybe Alex or Lexi. So I feel, I feel like there is a, I feel like there's a bit of a journey coming here. Now we have a boat, but it's empty. It's empty. So um, maybe in the future here, there's a, some kind of journey coming on. I feel like this has to do with a father figure, either in your life, one of your father figures, or um, maybe you yourself are a father, or y you have a, you know, you maybe have a child with somebody, um, your spouse or, or whatever. So... I feel like this next period of time, and it is in the near future, I don't feel like this is right now, but there's going to be something going on with them. Um, I feel like things are changing, uh, and I almost wonder, I really, I feel like it's almost kind of, um, somewhat of like a change in personality. Now we have the person under, under the moon. So it, to me, it's, it's all about this kind of really potent emotionality um, and kind of the ebb and flow that goes with that, right? The tide coming in, the tide coming out, this kind of back and forth possibly. 
Um, but I do feel, yeah, there's almost this kind of change in, in, um, they almost seem like a different person. It almost seems like something is going on where it's like, maybe it's a lot of stress. Maybe there's some kind of neurological thing happening. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but I do feel, I feel like it's something that it's, it feels almost worrisome, but at the same time, I kind of feel like it's, it, it, it's for the better, right? It's like they're changing and it's like maybe out of nowhere, it, it seems, it appears, right? Um, in a positive way. So it's kind of like they've become unstuck. But then at the same time, you look at it and you're like, what's going on with them? Like they've always been this person in my mind this is what their personality has been like. And then suddenly in the last, you know, months or year or a couple of years, they've really become, you know, maybe more engaged and more open, um, maybe a little bit more silly or goofy or eccentric or whatever it is, right? And there's something beneath it that, kind of you just feel like what's going on here um but also kind of like i i don't want to question what's happening because you know it seems like they're actually doing pretty well um they seem like a much easier person to maybe be around and so i wonder you know um It feels like, I, I feel like they're going through a spiritual awakening. And I think that this is really kind of, it's familiar to you because you yourself are a spiritual being, right? You're an, very activated. So then seeing somebody who felt so, I guess, you know, it's almost kind of like they're, um, they were set in stone, right? They've always been this kind of person and this is what they're into and this is what they think and believe. And, and as it has changed, it's been like, what the heck's going on, you know? Um, and so I do, I feel like it's interesting to kind of um, see people that you don't necessarily consider, uh, you know, spiritual or, or religious or, you know, whatever, um, even just open to ideas that are out of the material, right? Um, maybe the kind of person that would, you know, kind of, um, avoid or push away or di be dismissive of any kind of practices, even things that are like widely accepted, like yoga or meditation or whatever. Um, but so, yeah, it's interesting because it feels different. They feel like a different person. And I think that's really, um, this reading feels just almost like you're going through this period of time where you're really looking at your bond with the people around you. And I think really examining that. I think there's just something in the air, right? And I and this is it is the King of Swords kind of energy, um, just really not overthinking, but yeah, contemplating, going over these things, checking in with yourself. I mean, I think it's all of it. And so, um, yeah, an interesting, a different kind of vibe for Leo, right, this week. Um, and I'm digging it. I really like it. So let's go ahead. We're going to look at our, they're called the self-care affirmation deck. And I'm just going to flip through. We're going to stop where it feels right. Luminous vision. I have a bright future. There are beautiful days ahead. I imagine my future infused with hope. This luminous vision guides my life path. I am on the right track. I am on the right track. 
Yes, here, here. All right. Leo, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I love you because I do. <laughs> and I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And um, what else? What's the last thing? Oh, yes. If you'd like to leave a comment, please do. I'd love to hear from you, especially if you're new to the channel. Go ahead and shout it out. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Leo, I love you. Take care of yourself. We're going to talk in just a couple days from now. And good night.